to work on essential question two, which is how do I classify matter based on composition? So we're going to be talking about mixtures and compounds. Um, so back to our big idea, all matter can be organized into groups based on properties and composition. So we did properties yesterday, we're going to do composition today. All right, so you have notes in front of you. I'm um, a graphic organizer, so matter is at the top. And then we have two ways that matter is then um, separated based on composition. We have pure substances, which is not spelled correctly on the screen, so don't spell like that. The A and the N are backwards. Um, pure substances, and then we have a mixture. And the arrow you need to draw in here to the left is showing that mixtures can be separated by physical methods into pure substances. So you do need to write that in, please. So mixtures are separated by physical methods into pure substances. Now, with pure substances, we can then identify um, them as two separate things. They're either going to be an element. Now, elements are just simply found on the periodic table. So if you take a look at the poster over on the wall, these are the periodic table of elements. These are all of the elements that we have either in nature or man-made in a lab. So the individual elements by themselves are a pure substance. So like we just talked about oxygen, um, carbon, um, hydrogen, helium. Those are all examples of just individual elements. Now when we combine those elements into, when we combine them, put them together, then we get compounds. Two strawberry lemonade. Uh, regular lemonade and Arnold Palmer. We got the regular lemonade. I'll give you 50 cents for it. by chemical methods mean, mean that sometimes in a lab we can chemically separate a compound um, back into its original elements but you can't do that physically like you can't physically reach into a bucket of water and pull out the hydrogen or pull out the oxygen okay, it doesn't work that way. okay on the other side of the chart we have mixtures we have two types of mixtures either homogeneous or heterogeneous we're going to talk about the definitions of those. So what I would like for you to do is turn your... Is everyone have this written down? Yes. Okay, so we're going to copy down some definitions here. So do this on the back, please. Do this on the back. An element... So we're going to define element, compound, and mixture. <coughs> So you can abbreviate as you want to as long as you know, as long as you can read it, okay? 
So an element is a substance that is either discovered in nature or synthesized in a lab in pure form. So some of the elements on the periodic table are synthesized in a lab. They're not, um, they're not found in nature. And they cannot be separated into simpler substances by chemical methods. So even by, chem by chemical methods, elements cannot be broken down into anything more simple than the element itself. So the other two, um, we're also going to define compound and a mixture. So remember that compounds um, are formed by the union of two or more elements. So you just define element as something that either occurs in nature or that is synthesized in a lab that can't be broken down anymore. So it's the smallest building block in terms of atoms, okay? A compound is then a substance formed by the chemical union of two or more elephant elements in a definite ratio. So when we talk about that definite ratio, like water is H2O, right? So there's always two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Okay. And that ratio is fixed by nature, so that's not something that um, you know we change or that we made happen. It's just what happens in nature. And then on the other side of our chart, we had, so we had our pure substances and then we had our mixtures. So a mixture is a physical combination of two or more substances where the substances retain their original identity. And we're going to talk about what that means here in just a minute. I'm going to give you some time to write these down.
Okay, so we are going to eat since all of you said you were hungry. We're gonna eat. We're gonna eat. <coughs> you um, make sure that you might need to set the camera back so you can see this. You know, you'll see me right here. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna do this demonstration here. When we talk about mixtures, there are two types of mixtures that we're gonna talk about. Okay. Now, you don't have to write this down right now, so I just want you to watch. But we have two types of mixtures, a homogeneous mixture and a heterogeneous mixture, okay? And I'm going to show you examples of both. You got to write that. No, you don't have to write this down right now. Just, just wait and watch. Okay, so how many of you have ever used, like, crystal light packets or <coughs> lots of different kinds, right? So you just take the packet and put it in a water, a water bottle and shake it up, right? Okay, so when I do this, I'm combining the water with the powder that they use, right? And when I shake it up, what happens? It becomes uniform throughout, right? The powder dissolves into the water and now I have raspberry lemonade in this case, okay? So it has uniform consistency or uniform composition, okay? So that's your example of a homogeneous mixture. Now what you're going to get to eat is, how many of you ever had Chex Mix? Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to make my own version of it. But a heterogeneous mixture does not have uniform composition, and the individual components can still be identified. So if I take, I bought Chex Mix and pretzels and M&Ms. Okay, so if I pour some Chex Mix in here, and then I pour some pretzels in here, and then I take some of these M&Ms and put these in there. Okay, now all together, what do we call this? Chex mix, right? But if I mix it up, if I mix this all up and I have Chex mix, can you still pick out the individual pieces? Yeah. Can you still pick out the fact that I still have pretzels, I still have Chex cereal, and I still have M&Ms? Can you still see all those things? Okay, so that's what's important about the definition of a mixture is that you don't lose the original components of it. Now here, yes I mixed it up, yes it gives you pink lemonade, but really if I let this sit long enough, part of the particles from the powder would probably separate back out again. Okay, So it's still just a mixture, just like this one. So you can still identify the original components. So I gave you an example of a mixture of sand and salt. If I mix sand and salt together, can you see the difference between them? Yeah, because salt is coarser, right? It's a little bit bigger than sand. Same idea here, except this time I'm going to let you eat. Okay? Any questions about the difference between a mixture and then a compound or an element? <coughs> okay. 